What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Eddie Live Show, episode number 193. We have a returning guest, Joshua Vernon from Belize to Taiwan and back again, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. How's Belize, man? Shit's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. I've been at home for like about, we're getting close to a year now. A year already? Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. I've been following the podcast and stuff. Still rocking, still looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Same. I check in every now and again. You know, it's not the same when you can't watch it live. Yeah, because... <laughs> for sure. For sure. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the only thing, right, I was thinking about it and my girlfriend brought it up is the only downside to being on the podcast virtually is no wings. No food, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Just had to check that. That's good. Yeah, no, I know, man. Sorry. Yeah. But uh, so what's the plan, dude? You coming back or? Well, so uh, let me love. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I love the new well, pod the, mic, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it, it's been a work in progress for that, for sure. Um, Right now, the plan is to go back. Not trying to jinx anything, but it is in the works. So just just waiting to see what happens and when it does happen. Okay. Hopefully okay. in the near future. Okay. So originally you came to Taiwan from Belize, right? And you came to study, right? I mean, we talked yeah. about that in the first podcast, but we'll just quickly touch on that a little bit, right? So you came by, you came to study, you finished your degree, right? Is it a degree? Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Four, is it four years? Four year thing? Yeah, or, four yeah. year under, undergrad. Beautiful. Undergrad. Okay, cool, cool. So you finished and then you went back to see the family? Yeah. Yeah. Bas and basically so, just to so be you home take it from there. Yeah. You take it from there, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So you went back. Okay. Yeah. So I've been home since what was it? August. And so oh, wow. I decided, I decided, um, you know what my much like almost everyone I know, or, or a lot of people I know fell in love with Taiwan. Yeah. It's like, you know, but at the same time, I know that if I try to find a job or start working or something, coming yeah. back home is, is going to be something not so easy. So it was pretty much, okay, let's, let's try to go home now. Yeah. And then we, we, then we worry about getting back to Taiwan later. And that's pretty much where we are right now. I think that's smart, man. Cause uh, yeah, sometimes when you start to work, you know, it's hard to get holidays and stuff like, uh, yeah. And it, sometimes you open your business and, and then it's even harder because <laughs> everybody yeah. else gets their holidays first. Right. Yeah. Because like for you, how long it's been, been a couple Dude, years, right? Five. It's been five. You, yeah. The plan is see, this and, summer. The plan is this summer, but, uh, you know, a, a, a quick one on that in February, we were looking at tickets cause we planned on the summer. Right. And you know, tickets went up and stuff, but because it was early, we were able to find, you know, we had a long delay, I think in the Philippines, we were able to find three tickets for about 85,000. Right. And I was like, wow, that's cheap. Yeah, like, wow, that's, that's pretty really good. cheap to from you know, <laughs> yeah. type, type eight of Vancouver. I was like, OK, great, great, great. And then my daughter's passport was uh, expired because we haven't traveled in five years. Right. So I'm like, OK, so we did that. So we did her Taiwanese one and, and her uh, Canadian one. And we did my wife's okay. Taiwanese one. Mine is always, you know, mine's always valid because I always have to be valid. Right. Yeah. You so have no choice. I have no choice. Right. <laughs> so so I uh, so I was like, OK, so we did that. And we're looking at them. We're like, okay, cool. Price is still the same about a month later. All good. And then you get busy. And then, you know, you have your staff. And then, you know, one guy needs to take a, a month here. One guy's taking a month there. So it's like, okay, no problem. So we're waiting, waiting, waiting. And then we never booked. So we're like, okay, cool. So about uh, about two, three weeks ago, uh, I looked at the tickets. And so it was 85000 for three people, right? Round trip. Round trip. Now it's 65000 for one. You see, wow yeah, yeah. And it's like Ooh. oh my god it's over double it's almost triple like it's crazy so yeah uh so so we hopefully we're gonna have to just just do it i mean we just have to bite the bullet but again we haven't booked them yet and then I, i'm on uh what is it sky scanner that app and it's just like oh uh, taipei to vancouver is up you know 10 more thousand now it's seventy five thousand. it's like oh my gosh so yeah so it's kind of crazy it's, man Especially considering you guys are basically at compared to what it is now was like a three for one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so we, we, yeah, we have to go three of us and my wife's like, you know what, you, you guys just go, I'll stay. And I'm like, well, you know what? She needs the break. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. 
yeah, like you said, it's one of those moments where it's like, you know, you got to bite the bullet. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and speaking of biting the bullet, I kind of had that experience when I was coming home uh-huh. because I, I, I did not have a vaccine oh, and shoot double whammy. I didn't have a U.S. Um, visa at the time. It was like, okay, now we got to go all the way around to find a way back home. And so yeah. my initial trip was from Taipei to the Netherlands, then to Panama and then Guatemala and then Belize. I had a lot, it was supposed to be a lot of stops. However, um, on the website, it said like, okay, all you need is this test and you're fine. Like the okay. PCR or the, I forgot what was the other one. And so I don't even remember. Yeah. Being, being a broke college student, you go for the cheaper option because the website said they're both acceptable. So it's like, okay, fine. Let's just go with that one. Let's go. And then when I get to Panama, now I'm about to board my flight to Guatemala. Yeah. I get there and it's like, uh, you need a PCR test. I'm like, but why the the Guatemalan website states that all you need need is this. And, And then they're like, no. And they're like, oh, we just contact our boss, just contacted the boss in Guatemala. And they said, yeah, I'm like, oh, oh. Man. and so I, I, I ended up spending a total of about 19 hours in the airport in Panama. And then really, oh, I had to bite the bullet on a plane ticket from Panama to Belize at the very last minute, like okay. a direct flight. OK, and so okay. it was like, ah. That's, that's tough, man. Yeah. So, so actually, you know what, to be honest, I haven't even looked at any of the COVID things. Cause I haven't traveled again. Like I said, in five years, I think you don't need anything anymore, but I don't know, man, that was a year ago and it was still kind of, kind of crazy. I mean, I guess I should look right. <laughs> I think, I think a lot of places have changed by now. Like for yeah. example, the U S has changed Yeah, and they were like probably one of the more tighter restrictions type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I think you guys should be fine. Like, I hope so. You know, it's 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 weird because the last time, like five years ago when we went, uh, you know, we got our tickets, everything was sorted. Uh, we get to the airline and, you know, we're checking in two hours early, right? So all good, no problem. Uh, me, my wife, my daughter, my I have a Canadian passport. My daughter has a Canadian passport. My wife, you know, she cannot unless we live in Canada for I don't know how long, which we're probably not going to do. So, yeah. uh, you know, you know, we go and she's using her Taiwanese passport. She got the visa and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, where's the, they ask me for one more form. Right. And we're like, well, nobody mentioned anything about any forms. Right. So they're like, oh yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. Somebody emailed it to you. So like buried in an email, like a month ago was, oh, you need to fill out this one form, blah, blah, blah. So we're like, oh shoot. Okay. So let's fill it out now. They said, okay, so this form takes between, you know, for it to be done. Uh, and approved between 10 minutes and like two days. So I'm like, that's a fucking huge, that's huge. So I said, yeah. wait, a minute, wait a minute. So if it's not done, she can't board. They're like, no. So I said, okay. So the guy beside us, a uh, Canadian guy with Taiwanese wife, same thing. So my wife, his wife, fill it out within 30 minutes. Boom. She gets hers, the lady. Right. So boom, she's no problem. Uh, we're about to board. My wife doesn't have hers yet. So, she couldn't board. So she has to stay, right? She has to stay here. And then she uh, had to take like play, pay for another flight. She got it approved like two days later. And it was like a $10 US form. So it, she had to pay for like another ticket. It was a mess, man. It was it was pretty crazy. Yeah. To be honest, uh, every time we travel, uh, and like I love Canada and I, you know, I love traveling and stuff. But every time we go, there's always some kind of hiccup. And it's always like, uh, it's almost like anxiety, like, oh, shit, what are we going to have to deal with this time? Yeah. When I, you know, like, it's crazy, right? Because uh, like for me, uh, as a single guy, every time I traveled, um, first of all, I'm Canadian and I land in Vancouver, which is British Columbia. So as soon as I would land, it would be all Taiwanese people and me. So, you know, I'd get down there and I would always get hassled. In like in my own country, dude, in Canada, oh, man. in Canada. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, wait a minute, why, what? I mean, I'm thinking in my brain, like, where can you possibly deport me to? You know, like, I'm Canadian. Where can you, can you not let me in with a Canadian passport and a Canadian birth certificate? It's like, what is going on here? So I remember this one, uh, <laughs> this, this like, uh, you know, this like 
not ABC, like a CBC, like a Canadian born, like a Chinese lady. She's working there. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing in Taiwan? And I said, oh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just working out there and doing a little bit of, you know, doing some school. And she's like, so are you studying Chinese? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, studying, studying Mandarin. And she's like, so uh, you can speak Mandarin. And I'm like, yes. And she's like, so if I find someone to speak Mandarin with you, you can converse with them. And I'm just thinking, like, do I need Mandarin for Canada now? Like, what's going on? Like, it's ridiculous, <laughs> right? So I'm like, yeah. And then, you know, she tried to find some people. She couldn't find somebody. And I'm like in the front of the line. And it's all Taiwanese people and me, right? So I'm like, okay, waiting there. And then she's like, we might have to check your luggage. And I'm like, okay, go for it. She's like, you look, you know, you look really suspicious. And I'm like, okay. And like, you go, I don't know how to respond to that. You know, if I say go for yeah. it, is that insulting? Like what? I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, no problem. You know? So eventually no problem. They don't check. I get in, I'm waiting to you know, go through the, uh, the area where they kind of okay you. And I'm thinking, oh shit, I'm going to get, you know, for sure I'm flagged somehow. So, you know, I yeah. go through, no, no problem, no problem. So then the crazy thing I'm inside waiting for my suitcases, you know, waiting at the, uh, the carousel thing. And you know, I'm waiting there waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, my stuff starts to come down. I load it up. Then I feel this, you know, t -t 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 tap on the shoulder. It's, it's, a uh, it's police. Right. And then the guy's like, Hey, Paul, vous français? And I'm like, Oh, my French is not very good, man. And he's like, speak English. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I speak English, man. Uh, I speak Mandarin, Spanish and, and English, but my French is not good. And he's like, so you're the guy coming in from Taipei, huh? So I'm like, I mean, I'm trying not to, I'm like, you can't lose it. It's the police. It's, yeah. the, air, it's the airport, right? And I'm just you thinking to win. myself, you can't win. I'm like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, apparently apparently, I'm the guy, you know? And he's just like, where are you staying tonight? And I said, oh, I'm, my cousin's going to pick me up. I'm going to stay there. And then tomorrow I'm going back to, I'm going to fly up to Kitimat. And he's like, uh, oh, where, what, what's your cousin's address? I'm like, I don't know. She's picking me up. You know, I don't even know Vancouver at all. And he's just like, oh, okay, okay. And then uh, he's like, what's your address in Kitimat? And so I give him my house address and he's like grilling me. He's like, what's your house phone number? Give him my house phone number. And he's like, okay, uh, I need to see your, your uh, ticket for tomorrow. So I'm like giving him all my paperwork in Canada, in Vancouver. And I'm just like, as a Canadian, good? as a Canadian <laughs> with a Canadian. And, and I have like, because I always get hassled. I even bring my freaking British Columbia birth certificate. You know, I'm like, I got my freaking birth certificate. Like, what do you want yeah. from me, man? So like, yeah, it, it's crazy, man. Traveling uh, after we got uh, engaged and I brought my wife in, it was the same thing. We went in. All of my friends told us, hey, if you're bringing in with your wife, make sure she goes first. And I said, well, why that? You know, we go together. She's like, no, no, make sure she goes first, because sometimes there's always like, you know, they're trying to, you know, we're in Southeast Asia. So, you know, they think you might be smuggling in a. Uh, uh, an Asian, you know, wife or maid or something. And I'm like, what the fuck? Really? What's going on here? You know? So I said, okay. So my wife has her visa. She goes through no problem. And then I go in, you know, same thing. They're just like, okay, uh, when's your, uh, return? When is the flight, you know, your returning flight to Taipei? She, they're asking me and I'm like, my returning flight to Taipei. They're like, yeah, yeah I need to see your itinerary. I'm like, mm. Do I need a re do I need a return flight to Taipei as a Canadian? And I'm just like, what is <laughs> happening here? You know, so I was just like going through my stuff and I thought, oh, shoot, it's uh, it's in my wife's bag. So I'm like, I go to the front. I'm like, oh, wave her back. And then they don't, you know, I give it to them and they don't even look at it. They're just looking at her like, who's that? Like, oh, it's my my fiance. Uh, we're coming here to, to kind of, you know, do the party and get married in, in Taiwan. And like, well, why didn't you guys come in together? And I'm like, I don't know, like, what's going on? So, like, for so many years, every time I would land in Vancouver, there's this sort of escalator, right? This escalator comes down, and, you know, they have all, it's all this beautiful Canadian, like, uh, Aboriginal artwork. It's really nice. But as soon as I see that, it's like, oh, this anxiety starts to come on. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is the worst part of the trip. But yeah, it's crazy, man. Traveling is nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. Oh man, like the whole time you were talking, I I, I could one hundred percent relate because um, you got something like that, all, yeah. <laughs> like like I don't know why, when when you're going to your own country, they treat you like that. It's but, crazy. Um, when was it? When I was coming back in August, when I got home, this is after 
all that traveling to Amsterdam, Panama, yeah. 19 hours in the airport, That's sleeping crazy. on the floor. Crazy. Just got off the flight. You know, I one of my friends came to pick me up. I'm just, I just want to get there, get back to his house, just probably take a shower and just sleep or something. And so yeah. when you get to Belize, you, you pick up your luggage before you meet any, well, no, you go to the immigration first and that was no problem. You go through almost without any problem most of the time then you get your luggage and you're you're gonna go through customs now so okay on my paper they asked do you have anything to declare and i don't have anything to declare because i'm not bringing anything besides my personal stuff so sure. however this is the thing about belize for some reason whenever a belizean says they doesn't they don't have anything to declare well, they always suspicious. assume that yeah like you're lying so i get there Usually they, they just tell you like, go ahead or whatever. If you supposedly don't have anything to declare, well, that's yeah. what they do with most of the tourists or sure, sure. foreigners, whoever I get there. And the guy's like, uh, can I check one of your bags? I have two suitcases, one small, like carry on and my backpack. And so they're like, can I just, just one bag? I'm like, anyone? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, sure. No problem. So I just pick a random bag. I put it there. They open it. They go through it. And then he, the guy proceeds to be like, okay, can I check the other bag? I'm like, okay. In my mind, I'm like, you already said one, but okay, fine, whatever. Because you can't win. You don't like want you, to say anything. Yeah. 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 And so I give them the bag and then he's like, can I check the other bag? I'm like, what? I'm like, okay. Then he's like, let me check your backpack. And I'm like, why? What, can, like, what to, can you say? Could you say no? No, you can't say anything. He's like, yeah, hey, go ahead. What are you going to do? So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Like, like I don't have anything to hide because I'm not bringing anything illegal as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And so he goes to the bag. My girlfriend had given me a, a box with, like, the pineapple cakes. She's yeah, like, yeah, take yeah. this for your family. So sure. he of looks course. at it. He's like, what is this? I'm like, oh, that's a um, pineapple cake, whatever, whatever. Puts it back. He takes out my Xbox. And it, <laughs> I've had it for about... What the hell? Three years at that point. Okay. So it's still in pretty good condition, but you can see minor scratches at the bottom. Um, the little rubber at the bottom that's supposed to be for grip yeah. fell out. So I, I put a little bit of paper in there to have a, some kind of grip on the table. And so he's like, this looks like it's in good condition. This looks brand new. Because a lot of them assume that people okay. are he are trying to bring things into the country to resell. Oh, Okay. And so I'm should like, I, should I scratch it up next time? I'm like, what? You know, yeah. should I not take care of my stuff? And then so he's looking at it. He's like, this looks brand new. And I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, you can see the scratches at the bottom. Um, If you, he looks at the, con I'm like, look at the controllers. I have it all marked up with drawings on it. I'm like, and then he's like, I'm like, I registered it last night. Because that's the crazy thing. You can register stuff at the customs office at the airport really? because we only have we only have one international airport okay and so i didn't remember when was it that i registered it because yeah. i went back home twice in summer 2019 and winter break 2020 so i'm like i think i registered it in summer 2019 he goes through the book doesn't find my name or doesn't find anything so now he's thinking i'm lying yeah i'm like well i i wrote in the book i don't know what you guys did with it i don't know what happened but i know i wrote in the book and so he's a, you can tell he's one of the younger guys. And I then mean, the how, older how, guy. How can you remember that? Like, it, it's just like, hey, can you say, yeah, sure. Here. And then. May 12th, 2012 or something. You know, who knows? Yeah, so, like, I, I, how can I be so accurate? And it's in an old book. But I'm like, okay, whatever. And so you can tell, like, it's the older officer, like, telling him, you know, like, pressure this guy. Like, don't get him, get off too easy. Like, you know, it, it's going to be on you. And I'm like man, are you serious? At that time, one of my friends were waiting for me to get something from me because I brought some stuff from Taiwan because he sure, left before he, because we were both in Taiwan, but he left ahead of me. So yeah, he was with his dad who used to work there. And I, and so he was like, my dad wants to know like who's working. I'm like, I tried to give him a description. And so, but luckily I got through right before his dad was going to make a call to be like, yo, what, what, what's, what the what's the hold up on? with this guy? Yeah. And you know, but it's so frustrating that 
you as someone from your country, you have to go through all of that and worry about, do you know anyone that can, that can contact someone there yeah. to be like, yo, give him a break or, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy because it's like, that's, that's my country. Like, well, this is the country, like we go outside and it's hard. You know, we live outside. I mean, I get to see my family, like, you know, two, three times a decade. Right. Because, you know, we're here, uh, we go, we do the Canadian events and stuff out here and, and we're doing all this stuff. Like we're out here, like I'm doing so many things, you know, we, you know, we're representing Mexico and representing Canada and, you know, we do Canada day, we do all this stuff. And then you go back home and it's just like, when, what, why? Oh, you speak Chinese. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, well, so if I find somebody, you can speak with them. Yeah. I mean, I can, but do I, do I have to, you know, like, well, yeah. what's the problem, man? <laughs> I just, I just want to see my mom, you know, like what's going on here. You know, it's crazy. Like, like for the Chinese part, when you get to Taiwan, they don't even ask you, can you speak Chinese? You know? Yeah. So, so the total opposite, whenever I come back to Taiwan, I come, I have my APRC. I have that little, uh, that little sticker on the back of it. You know, you just, you swipe it into this machine and they're just like, boop, boop. Hey, Hey, welcome to Taiwan. And then, you know, even if you go to the person, they look at it and they're like, Oh, you know, blah, blah. They just say, you know, they're super nice. And then, you know, I speak, you know, a little bit of Chinese to them and they're like, Oh, wow, now, you know, and then it's just like, wow, everybody's, <laughs> they're super nice. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. And then when I go back to Canada, I guess I get hassled. It's crazy, man. You know, uh, the, the one time, I know the two times that I went back and didn't get hassled. I had my daughter when she was a baby. So apparently if you, if you want, if you want to smuggle, bring a baby because they're just like, oh, sh waving us through and I'm like walking <laughs> with my baby, like totally like, and, you know, total, I never, I hardly ever have, you know, anxiety. And I'm just like, you see this and I'm just like, I have my baby and I'm like, Oh, they're just like waving, waving, waving. And I'm just like, you know, with my daughter, like, okay. Are we okay? Is everything good? Yeah. Okay, cool. And it was like, yeah, no problem. And when we traveled with my daughter, everywhere we went, it was just like, come to the front to, you know, Korea, Japan, wherever, come to the front, come to the front. They just, everybody's waving you through, except for we took a really cheap flight from Vancouver uh, back to Taiwan, but we had to go through uh, Beijing. Okay. So, so going into Beijing, you know, we're just kind of like, hey, everyone's just waves us to the front. So we have my daughter and, you know, pushing all this stuff. And then we're like, oh, you know, we go kind of like, hey, you know, we have we have a baby and they just kind of look at you like. And so what? Back of the line. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah. I, I well, to be honest, I, I love traveling because I I don't get to do it that often. So when I'm on the flights. You know, even if, you know, airplane food and all that is not, you know, it's not fantastic. I love it because I'm just sitting there. I'm always serving. So I'm there getting served like, oh, can I get some headphones? Can I get a, you know, a Coke? Can I have whatever? You know, you, I always drink like a tomato juice with you know, on the rocks. I'm just sitting there like, yeah, it's great. I love it. It's just, yeah, landing in Canada. The anxiety is real. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah and, that, yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like here in Belize, when you land, it's a really nice view because you land yeah. over, over like uh, I could say like a part of the rainforest, kind of beautiful. With like the, and you see a river and everything. It's like, oh, this is a nice landing. And when I came from Panama, because of that direction, I was coming over the barrier reef, and so you see all that nice blue and everything. Yeah, it's like and paradise. It, and then when you get out of the plane, it's not paradise anymore. <laughs> They're just like, oh, this guy's back. You're like, ah, yeah. And another quick story uh, while we talk about this. Um, before I opened this branch of, of, of my restaurant, I went to do this sort of a business course in L.A., right? So it's okay. me. I had, I, had uh, I don't need a visa, but my wife had a visa. So we're like, okay, we're going to go to L.A., and I thought, man, I always hear, you know, how bad, how bad, you know, the American uh, immigration is. Right. So I'm thinking I have an Asian wife, I have a Mexican name. It's going to be hell. Right. So we go, <laughs> we land, you know, they, you know, they have the foreign, you know, and the domestic. Right. So domestic is empty. Foreign, there's like a huge line. But my wife's Taiwanese and I'm Canadian. None of us is American. So we go, we wait in the other line. And we're waiting. It took us almost two hours to get to the front of the line. So I'm there, okay, and we get to the front of the line, 
and we go together. I have my Canadian passport. She has her Taiwanese passport. I take my Canadian. I put it on the top, right? And I give it to them with my Canadian on the top. And then the guy in the front, he looks at it, looks at me. He's like, you're Canadian. I'm like, yeah, man, Canadian. He's just like, oh, shoot. You don't got to wait in line with these guys, man. Next time, come through domestic. Boom, boom, stamp, stamp. Welcome to America. And I'm just like, what? He's just like, yeah, no, you don't have to wait in the line with these guys, man. You know, you're Canadian. You come in the domestic next time. Okay. He's like, oh, okay. And I'm thinking like, oh, Canada's bad. This is going to be really bad. No problem. It was amazing. Best, best, uh, that is up there with Taiwan, like the best, best uh, service ever. It was amazing. I was shocked, actually. It's one of the rare moments. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, no, because I see me and then there's all these Asians and there's Mexicans, everybody. We're all in line together. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, Latinos, everybody's in line. I'm like, okay, cool. We get to the front and my, you know, Edgar Gonzalez, right? You know, Mexican name. You know, I'm just like, okay. And he's like, boom, oh, Canadian. You got to wait with these guys, man. Go with the domestic. Oh, Okay, next time I will, man. I haven't been back though, so yeah, next time, next time. Amazing. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, we'll the only problem, the only problem is if you go with your wife. Yeah, is that the Taiwanese passport? They might, they might be like, uh, "What are you doing in this line?" Well, that's the thing. I said my wife's Taiwanese. I'm like, and he's like, "Yeah, no problem. She's with you. You guys come on in." And I thought, "Whoa, this okay. guy's great." Oh my gosh, I almost wanted to take a picture with the guy and be like, hey, this guy's awesome. <laughs> but I was just like, I just want to get out of here because it's like uh, the airport. I'm like, I'm not going to push my luck, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, about your podcast, man. So your podcast is about similar situations with like, you know, dealing with stuff like this, right? Like the anxiety and stuff like that. That's all. Yeah. That's, a, that's a topic on your podcast, right? So so in the beginning, let's let's step back a little bit and talk about uh, you're on like episode almost 80, right? 73, yeah. 75, almost something 80. like that. Uh, actually 78. 70, okay, closer. good. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. So in the beginning, so for the people maybe that are meeting you for the first time, uh, what was the inspiration to start your podcast? Cause there are so many, right. And everybody's like, Oh, nobody needs another podcast. But yeah, most people like they think, uh, I'm going to start a podcast. Everyone's going to love it. I'm going to make all this money by episode 10, right? And it's like, well, and then they don't, and by episode 15, everyone stops. It seems like, not everyone, but a good amount, yeah. A, a lot probably end way before episode yeah, way 10 before. as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so your like, inspiration, let's see it, let's have it, brother. Honestly, I'd say first and foremost, it has to be two of my friends that started their own podcast. Okay, um, beauty. During, during the time of Belize being in, lockdown as was the world you know sure us in taiwan in taiwan we were pretty good life was life was somewhat great. normal was you know and so my friends had started one and i'm like oh and i was still new into listening to podcasts it was like yes maybe a couple months after i started listening to podcasts i'm like okay my friends are have they have a podcast of their own so i should listen to it and so i was listening to it i was like oh maybe one day i get on the podcast however maybe when I get back home because I'm, I'm not there right now. Yeah. You know, it, it's not the same dynamic as if you're there in person. And so I'm like, okay, fast forward a year. Um, my girlfriend had a friend of a friend who had a podcast of his own, a Taiwanese guy. Okay. And at, at that point in time, he was doing interviews with foreigners okay. to talk about their countries compared to Taiwan. And nice. Yeah. It's like a co culture exchange type of stuff, if you want to look Excellent. at it like that. Yep. And so when I did that, um, I, w I wasn't the best speaker. I, I don't consider myself to be the best speaker as is right now. However, when I did that and I listened to the episode when it came out, I'm like, oh, I'm actually not too bad at talking. I'm pretty I'm like, good. <laughs> you know, and so I'm like, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe I could just do something. And so just hearing myself be on another podcast gave me this real inspiration to be like, okay, let's, let's make one for real now. And so it was like, you know, you're, it's one of those when you're out with your friends type of ideas, when you're drunk and you're like, oh yeah, man, yeah, we'll yeah. do this. And with all the ideas pop up, you're going to do the, you're going to do the most amazing things in the world. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, I remember I was at the dorm by myself listening to the episode. And when my roommates came back, I was like, Hey bro, let's, let's do a podcast. And it was three of us. So I was like, hey, we should do a podcast, all three of us. One of them had the 
equipment. He had a mic and everything. Nice. And so I was like, okay, we can do this, guys. But then, like, a couple days later, I'm like, ah, we're this close to graduating, a year away. And and this is me thinking down the road because yeah. I'm like, okay, what if this podcast survives for a long time? I'm like, are we really going to make this work with three of us? And we're all from three different countries, Belize, it's Honduras, tough. and Nicaragua. I'm like, okay, okay. How, how, how is it going to survive when we graduate and all go our separate ways? Yeah. And so... I decided to be selfish. I'm like, you know what? No, I'll, I'll just do this by myself. Okay. And then I started to think, okay, what exactly am I going to talk about? Then I started to think, you know, because you want to talk about things that you you value. Because if it's just any random topic, just because that's the thing for now, it, it won't last. That that seems to be like uh, something where people, people will, uh, it seems to get more views in the moment, but uh I don't know. It's, it, it, it seems yeah a bit artificial, right? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And so I had a long time thinking about this. I'm like, first of all, before I even figured out, like, I was like, hmm, okay, maybe mental health. Because at that time, I had been visiting the school counselor. And I'm like, yes, you know, this has started to become a priority for me. So yeah. why not make this be my topic? Because it's something that I've lived through for the past year or change. Because after my dad died, I started to have anxiety. I started to have different things based on different circumstances. So I'm like, okay, this is something that matters to me. This is something that people around my age and people in general don't speak about enough. So I'm like, hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah. So I'm like, let let's let's see what I can do about it, even if it's just to change the thought process of someone, or even start a thought process, or just bring about awareness to the topic. So I'm like, okay, let's do this. And now, I like, I remember one day I went down to a park not too far away from school, right in the Silin area there in Taipei. Okay. Um, I was just there sitting. I went with a notebook. I'm like, okay, time to figure out a name. Okay. And then I'm there sitting. I, I had a name with something like something with the number seven in there. Like okay. Lucky number seven or, or something because, and then I started to, to BS my way around the reason for the name. I'm like, okay. Seven. Seven used to be one of my favorite numbers. Seven is generally a lucky number. Yeah, it is. Um, lucky one. And then I started to count it out. I'm like, oh, I'm actually the seventh person in my family because I have my parents. I have my oldest brother, who's my half brother. Then I have three other siblings and then myself. So that's number seven. So I'm like, oh, OK, maybe number seven. I'm onto something. And then we have like over seven billion people in the world, but it's actually like eight. So I'm like, I mean, now, geez, I'm, I live in my own bubble, man. I, okay. I, I think it's, I think it's, eight. <laughs> no I'm not 100% sure, but okay, I remember okay. like seven was the number for a while. Okay. Like around here. So I'm like, okay, seven. But I'm like, no, this, this name doesn't, it doesn't really, I don't like it that much. And then eventually I was going through things and I'm like, you know what? This is my world. So I'm like, just, just jokingly, I said, you know what? Planet Josh. And that then it, it stuck. It stuck with me. And then even now, it's kind of funny because when I'm back home here and I meet some guys, one of them was like, Josh World. I'm like, <laughs> and I just laugh because, I mean, yeah, Josh World, Planet Josh, kind of similar, but that's not the name. But so that came about. I started it with my roommate. It was horrible at first. Everyone is everyone at the beginning. It's, it's tough, brother. Yeah, yeah. You go back it and was, you look at Joe Rogan episode one. It's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's like, you know as much as you want people to check out the podcast i'm like please don't start at episode one because yeah 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 you might not you might not want to stick around yeah and for so sure. and i'm listening to it you know that that first episode being someone that's doing it by myself recording it then uploading it as compared to yours which is a live show yeah um when you're when you're doing it by yourself especially um pre-recorded it's like you, you start to overthink what you're saying and it's like, 100%. man, I can say this better or or I could have said this instead. And so that first episode took a couple tries. We did it late at night at like 2 a.m. Um, my other roommate was asleep. The AC was on. So we were trying to battle with a lot of background noise. It was a lot of a lot of challenges, but yeah. we made it out. We, we put it out there. People told me like, oh, wow, 
you have a really nice voice for a podcast. Um, and then when I'm listening to it now, I'm like, what were those people thinking? Because the we podcast <laughs> I'm listening to back from the old episodes, I'm like, yeah, that was not it. It's 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 crazy because uh, when you listen back to your own voice, it always sounds weird. Like I've heard like my voice now like a million times, and I'm sort of used to it now. But but uh, yeah, it, for a while, it's like, what is this? This is this is not what I sound like. It's because you know you hear yourself talk, but it's kind of a uh, I think the projection from your mouth, and then you know what you're hearing. I guess internally, I mean, it's not. It doesn't sound the same. <laughs> yeah, and then, that's like, the reason. It's the reason why some people are just like, wow, they're doing karaoke, and they're like, they think they're sounding like amazing, and then it, some of them <laughs> do, and some of them are like, e you know, it's crazy. Yeah, when yeah. They, and when they listen to a video of them sing, and like someone that recorded, it, it's like, oh, is that really me? And then yeah, it's crazy, yeah. Like, yeah. like the thing that messed me up a lot is while in Taiwan. In Belize, we don't have, we generally have a Belizean accent per se. Okay. However, during my time in Taiwan, I learned to mask that accent in order for people to understand me better, like non-native speakers, because English okay. isn't their first language. When you have that little bit of the accent, there is a chance that our local language will come out because it's very similar to English, but still different, which is okay. Creole. And oh. so... For myself, when if I don't mask it, there's a higher chance that I might drop in a couple words there or or and then people that don't understand it are gonna be so confused. So I learned how to mask it and then a couple people used to tell me, like people from back home are like, That doesn't even sound like you. That sounds like an American or, or something. And it, yeah, it made yeah. me self self conscious of it. And now that I listen back to a couple of them, I'm like, eee what was that but at the same time i was already programmed for four years of talking like that because i have a lot of taiwanese friends that i made from through basketball or through whatever and their english yeah. isn't the best yeah for and sure. so i have to try my best to make it easy for them to understand and i think in general a lot of taiwanese tend to listen to or what they consume a lot of american or western media yeah for so sure that accent makes it easier for them to kind of understand what is being said so for sure for sure yeah yeah usually usually like uh when i would uh teach kids or adults everybody would be like wow you know you talk really slow and very easy to to understand and i'm like is that i talk really slow is that is that a comment is that a compliment i mean like, i don't know so <laughs> so yeah but no it's 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 very yeah i, I understand i've had friends yeah with uh with like uh, british accents and stuff and it was definitely tougher for them at way back in the day to get you know like english teaching jobs and stuff like that but uh no like uh, like i watch you know i'm watching your podcast and stuff and i know you obviously you're interviewing a lot of people in belize right and and definitely i i don't know that many belizeans so i was expecting everyone to sound like you <laughs> and then when yeah. i hear i was like oh Look, that, that, that's a pretty unique sounding accent. And I'm just like, oh, listening, listening. Like, oh, very, very different, very different. But it's, it sounded familiar, but different. I was trying to trying to pick it out. And then they say, oh, I'm, you know, uh, living in Belize, blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah, oh, okay, that must be it. Now, must now be it makes sense. Yeah. Now it makes and sense. Then, yeah. While, while I'm talking to them, it, it brings it out in me as well, because yeah. then we will occasionally drop the little bit of Creole here and there throughout the episode. Beautiful. Because you know, yeah, to you me, it's you. hard to it, it's hard to speak that type of English with someone else that you know will understand you in the purest form. Yeah, understand. Yeah, it's funny how how, how languages they all have their own sort of style, like like Spanish. Like I speak Spanish, but I I speak like a, like a Mexican Spanish, right? And I always tell the and I always tell, uh, you know, people that come in and we, ch we chat in Spanish sometimes, you know, if it's Mexicans, if it's like, uh, you know, if it's like somebody close to you, Mexican Spanish, uh, where I live, it's very like a, it's like a very uh, like a ghetto style Spanish. You know, it's like everybody's okay. like everybody's kind of like everybody's just, you know, heckling and making fun of each other. And that's just how everyone talking right We're in my family, at least. Right. And then so but a lot of the people we get in here are. You know, from the embassies, you know, you know, all the embassies for, for all the Latino embassies, they come in and they eat and they chat, you know, pilots and stuff and everyone has their suits on and stuff. And I mean, I can't 
you know, I can't, I have to keep like this filter on my Spanish because yeah. it's like, I, I can't swear and I can't be like, you know, just let all the Spanish out because, you know, it, that maybe they get insulted. Like in, for example, in Mexico, there's a saying, uh, uh, Viva Mexico cabrones, right? You know? <laughs> and, and, and that's, and, and in Mexico, it's, it's, although it is kind of like a swear word, but people say that. And it's kind of like Taiwan Jio, like, like, you know, like it, it, that's okay, what it's like, it. right? And it's exactly the same. But when you say that, you know, you say that with Mexicans and they're like, hey, Mexico, Mexico, you know? Yeah. But if you say that to like a, another Latino, they're just like, oh, how come you, you know, why are you swearing in front of me or swearing in front of my kids or something? It's like, you're like, no, what? It's so, so for me, I have to always keep like this, this like really weird filter when I speak Spanish and it's make my Spanish a little bit, uh, less smooth you know because i'm like i have to keep yeah. it like i have to keep it very clean it's like it's like when you listen to a to a cd or a cd or, a, or like an mp3 or a song and they have like the original version you know and it's like very smooth and it swears or else it or, or they have like the clean version clean version or, yeah. or it sounds very weird so that's what i have, yeah. to, do. I think you have to keep like the clean version spanish on when i speak spanish so it's just not as smooth, yeah, for sure. And and it's really weird, especially when you compare the two. That's when you really notice the difference. If if the clean version was the only version that you knew, yeah, it would have been fine. But because yeah. you know there's an unfiltered version that you heard first, when you start yeah. hearing the filtered one, it's like, uh, what is this? This isn't the same song that I know. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you hear like a, like an old like a Snoop Dogg or something, but it's like the clean version, and you're like, what is what? What is this? You know. And I also come from this really, uh, a really small town in Canada, right? This like really, really small town. And it's a great town. It's called Kitimat. Love it. I can't wait to go back. And so at the bar, there's one, I think, there, well, there was one or two bars. That, so when people go out and drink, it's like from ages like, you know, 19, is it? You know, it's 19 up to like, you know, 50 or 60. Uh, there's an old uh, Billy Idol. I don't know if you probably don't even know Billy Idol. There's a song called Money Money, right? So there's a, uh, and when there's a, there's always this pause in the song, and when this pause, I mean it's it's a swearing, right? It's when this pause comes on, uh, all of the people in the bar in my town scream like, "Hey, M," and you know they they scream like I can't I can't actually say it, but it's like yeah. it's just pure swearing, right? Everybody in the bar screams it, and then the music goes back on, and they start drinking again, and when it does that little break, it just boom, everyone screams that, right? <laughs> So I know I'm I'm like downtown Taipei. Everyone's drinking. That song comes on like this is 20 years ago, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, everyone's dancing, and then I'm drinking. I'm drunk. All of a sudden, you know, that pause comes on, and I'm like, hey, I'm screaming, and everyone just looks at me like, what the hell? And I'm like, oh, you guys, uh, you guys don't do that here. Huh? <laughs> They're just like. Uh, but you <laughs> yeah, know that's crazy. the crazy thing about when you yeah. think about Taiwan though is because I've been to a bunch of different like sports games mostly well only basketball and whenever they play songs yeah the English songs are the unfiltered version so you hear every single bad word yeah it's crazy yeah and then for me when I'm back home if you if you hear that out in public at a like a public event like that like something that's more family oriented yeah, yeah you're like oh why why are they playing this here however in taiwan it's like yeah sure no problem i guess it's based on the fact that english isn't the la main language so it's like yeah. okay we can let it slide it's just like if i come to belize and i play a couple taiwanese songs that are swearing yeah. in chinese yeah we don't know right? yeah we don't know so it's like okay but the crazy thing is i feel like english swear words are some of the most known throughout the world well, no known, matter right? what it is, yeah, yeah. 100%. you know, the main ones, the F, the B, yeah, whatever, exactly. those, yeah, are, yeah, those yeah. are very common words. I remember going to like a, like a Carrefour. I mean, we go all the time, but I remember, you know, five, five, ten years ago, you're going to like a Carrefour, you know, you're pushing your buggy, grabbing, you know, vegetables or whatever. And then like Tupac hit him up, comes on and it's just like blasting on the speakers in Carrefour. <laughs> and I love that song. I, it's one of my, and I love that song, but it's like, whoa, it's, it's, it's a lot of swearing and everybody's just kind of walking around, you know, you know, checking, you know, getting the noodles and getting all this stuff that they got to get and, and the bread and the meat and stuff like that. And it's just like, whoa, it's crazy. So yeah. And it happened recently at, at like a, a new subway down the street to just open. So we went in there uh, we got a sub and they had like this crazy like gangster rap from like the from like the 90s that I listened to in high school and I like. But it's like I told the lady, I'm like, hey, 
I love it. But I mean, the, the international schools are right across the street. So I guarantee yeah. you, you're getting lots of international kids in here. So like play ICRT or play something in Chinese or something, something else. else. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially being in that area where yeah. there are the international schools, they will understand. They will. Yeah. And they're going to, and they're not going to be happy. <laughs> they're going to be like, what is this? They won't go back or they'll complain. It'd be crazy. Like, like, I feel like the kids, they won't care because, you know, be like, when yes. you're like yeah. the teenagers and what's not, they're like, yeah, yeah they, they love that stuff. You're going through that phase where it's like, you're, you're, love- you're just going crazy with it. But yeah, yeah. The, the parents that go or whatever are going to be like, oh, uh, this what is, is this? Not, yeah. yeah. What's going on here? It's, it's funny because for me, um, a lot of the music that gets played, like like for example, uh, I you know I have my restaurant, so in the kitchen I have a uh, uh, some of my staff is from Indonesia, and it's funny because some of the older stuff seems to be like still popular or coming back or whatever. So I'll go in and you know they're playing, you know I, we have like a little stereo set up there, and you know everyone can plug in their phone and they can basically DJ while we're working, right? So they put in the, you know they plug in their phone and. Uh, they're playing like eighties classic rock. And I'm like, Hey, this is, this is, this is like my high school, you know, elementary and high school. I'm like, this is great. I'm like, Oh, I remember this song. And you know, like guns and roses, November rain will come on or something. And, and then I'll be like, Oh, you know what? I'll tell them a story about, Oh, when I was in high school, everybody loved this song for the high school dances. Cause it's like nine minutes long or whatever. So as soon as the beginning comes on, everybody would run around and, and look for like the prettiest girl. Cause they get to dance with her for nine minutes for a know? long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be, it's funny, man, it, it's crazy. I get to hear those old songs and you know, it's, it's pretty cool. It, it's weird how, you know, sometimes back here, I feel like I'm, I'm living kind of like 20 years in the past. And, and one more quick thing on that. Um, I have a friend that lives here for, you know, you know, half a year and then he goes home for half a year. Right. And so he's like, he's all up to date on all the new trends. And I've been here for 20 years. Right. So when he comes back and we start talking about music and stuff like that, he tells me, uh, he feels like he's talking to Austin powers, you know, I'm like, Austin <laughs> powers. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, yeah, because all the stuff, you know, about Canada and the West and everything is 20 years ago. And you still talk about it. Like it's today. And I'm like, oh, it's still today for me, you know, because I live here. Yeah. You know? I'm living my little bubble, you know. I still listen to 80s classic rock and 90s rap. Yeah. It's crazy. Hey, hey it's <laughs> what you enjoy listening to. Yeah. So, you know, and my, my dad, uh, my parents are Mexican, obviously. So my mom, we get to listen to all the old Mexican music. And my dad is like a, a musician, like a like an old rock and roll guy. So he, so I grew up listening to you know, Mexican music and then cumbia and all this stuff from like all the Latin countries. And then uh, on my dad's side, like like Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and all that stuff. So when I hear stuff like that, it, it reminds me of my my dad. <laughs> and when I go to a, like a Mexican restaurant or when I'm chatting with people and an old song comes on, I'll be like knowing all the words in Spanish. And then people are looking at me like that song is like from 1950 <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> hey, that's what i grew up listening to yeah it's crazy yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's a very common thing in like our countries around yeah. this part like you you listen to a lot of the old songs really like, old yeah like in belize i'd say a lot of old country songs that are well known like the kenny rogers the dolly oh, parton yeah? nice a lot of, like especially where i'm from like I'd say the people of Indian descent, they love their country music. Like if you go to anywhere that's a karaoke place, it's mostly country songs you're going to hear. Really? That's beautiful. Yeah, and these are old songs from like what, the 80s, 90s, whatever it may be. But as a kid, you hear them so often, whether it's on the radio or just someone playing it, you you, you pick up on the words. You might not know the entire song, but you will know a couple of lyrics from it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it, it's and sometimes... Uh, when you're growing up and you hear this pop popular music, you don't really know who sings it and you don't really know it. But when it comes on like 20 years later, it's like uh, burned into your brain and you start humming <laughs> it, you know, the words and stuff. And everyone's like, Oh, who sings that? I'm like, I have no idea. I just know it because I've heard it. Like it's been like grilled into my brain for, you know, since I was a kid. So yeah, it's pretty funny, man. And, and that makes, you know, it makes no sense sometimes when it comes to music is how, you can literally not hear the song for so many years. Yeah. But the moment it comes on, it's like you were listening to it all this time. Yeah. And then 
sometimes we can just forget something that we were supposed to say like five minutes ago. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like, I, man, I today, you know, we're a little bit late because I, uh, I have this, uh, my st my stereo, my PA system is what I used to use before for the audio, and it's not, it wasn't working very well. So I had, uh, I thought, okay, you know what, I'm gonna bring my my Procast and my Rode, you know, Procaster thing, and I forgot it. And I'm like, I forgot it. So I'm setting everything up and I'm like, what's missing? I'm like, oh my God, there's no mixer. My mixer's missing. <laughs> like, what, what is wrong? You know, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But let it's that really old cool. song, let that um that old Mexican song come on. Oh, you yeah. know the lyrics. <laughs> you know the and it's oh, it's crazy, man. I love it. I love that stuff. So I got a couple more questions on the podcast. Uh so do you what kind of like an impact do you hope that your podcast will have on its listeners um generally it's just for some people to let them know that they're not the only person that's going through something because it's easy to feel alone in those in this world for sure like I, i i feel like when the mind really starts to mess with you it, it can do a lot it can let you know that oh you're the worst you're the only person that's ever experienced this you're the only one And so, like, you just deserve to be in this hole. You don't deserve to see. Yeah, you're like, ugly, to, to feel better. Yeah, 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 everything yeah, negative. Yeah. And so, like, it, it's just to show people that, you know, you're not the only one that goes through things like this. And it's also to show myself that there are other people that experience certain things. Because when I, certain people, and I interview them or, or we just discuss certain topics, I'm like, oh, wow. It's nice to see that other people experience this as well. Other people have the same train of thought. I'm not the only one. So like it helps myself yeah. as as well as I hope it helps listeners. And it's also to just kind of, you know, start the conversation on, on something that we don't generally speak on. Because if it's one thing I realize and I've realized it more and more since I've been back home is that uh -huh. we are very pro macho, macho man. Latinos, man, for <laughs> sure. Like in Mexico. Oh, my gosh. It's super macho, it's super macho. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, from Mexico all the way down to Brazil is very macho, like all Central America and South America and all the yeah. islands, everybody, everybody, right? Yeah. And like, you know, it's that Latino culture that Belize has because we have both Caribbean and Latino culture. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and both of them are very much mm -hmm. strong guy, tough guy, yeah. no problems, aggressive type of personalities. Yeah. And I, I've seen it a lot, especially in everyday life when I just walk around and I see the interactions with people always ready to be hostile, always ready to yeah. be the, be super aggressive. And I grew up loving watching football or what people call soccer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love basketball. That's my number one sport. I played more than, well, that's the only sport I really play. However, growing up, I used to, I used to watch a lot of football with my dad because he loved watching football. Yep. Um, and so as a kid, I was always go, I would always go to the little local games, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And it's great. So, Since I've been back, they've had like little local tournaments and there are usually games every Saturday and Sunday. I'm out there Saturday and Sunday watching both games. Nice. However, the only thing I've gotten from that is I'm like, man, people really love to just be just want a reason to fight. Yeah, I was going to so, say there's probably a lot of fighting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I had just gotten back, I'd say in around September or October, there are about There used to always be fights, but it wouldn't be on the field. It would be like a bunch of like young guys, I'd say like maybe 16, 17, 17, 18, there about. Um, for some reason, a fight starts. And it's the same group of people always starting something every weekend or whatever. Yeah. And then just like maybe two or three weeks ago, I was just watching a game and this one girl was there watching her brother. Yeah. And so football is a very physical sport you sure, tackle sure. you it's a lot of contact in it and however mm -hmm. when a lot of people watch it they assume that their team is not supposed to be hit it's with very, anything physical it's very biased towards their team yeah, yeah super sure. biased and so it's yeah, like yeah. this one girl was watching her brother play and she was like oh you stupid ref and like like indirect threats that they don't really mean but yeah. it's just what they're used to saying it's like yeah I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, wow. Like, I literally just come to the games, whether it's with my friends or by myself. I'm there sitting. I'm watching the game. I enjoy the game, 
and I might pick a team that I want to win, but yeah, if something happens, it's not like oh, I'll I'll, I'll beat you up. I wanna I want don't wait until I meet you after the game or or yeah. stuff like that. It's like, and then that's the same behavior that's passed down to the yeah. younger generation, and so it's like a culture, if, right? Yeah, and and so like if if in some way, shape, or form, my content can get across to someone in that age range to kind of help them start to look at things differently it would be a huge plus okay like for me i always say if each and every episode just affects one person that's a that's a win i'll take okay. it because it's one more than it would have that that wouldn't have been affected if i had not yeah. released that episode and so yeah that's awesome man i love it. that's a great answer i think i think uh yeah it, uh growing up you know as a you know a mexican in canada Canada is also quite macho, right? We have like hockey and stuff like that. So, I mean, in hockey, you're supposed to fight like part of the, I don't know if you've watched much hockey, but it's like they have people on the ice to protect like the best player and they're, they're there to fight, you know, and, and it's like a five minute penalty and the referees, you know, as soon as people drop the gloves, uh, the referees just back up and they're like, all right, Go ahead. Yeah, there's no one stops the fight. It's crazy. So, so <laughs> the Canadian culture is, is similar, and then of course the Mexican culture is is it's the same. So with soccer, people are swearing and screaming at each other, and and I remember as a kid going to a a pro game in Mexico with my dad. Uh, I think the very very front, like the VIP front seats, were like, you know, like twenty dollars Canadian, right? So we're going to buy tickets, and you know, we're looking at the prices, and I said, oh, that's like. $20. I think I was 12, you know, and, uh, I told my dad, Oh, that's perfect. Let's, you know, we can sit right in the front. And my dad, my dad's Mexican, right? He's like, no, no, we're not sitting in the front. And I'm like, well, why not? And he's like, you'll see, you'll see. Right. So we, you know, we sit kind of in the middle, right? So we're going in there, you know, people are cheering and there are people in the front, kind of like the, 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 the rich people they're sitting in the front. Right. So, you know, people are there and the people that are, maybe they have less money you know, they go, the, it's normal, you know, the, the cheaper tickets are more more in the back, right? So yeah. a lot of these guys that are coming in, they don't have that much money to spend, uh, so they don't want to miss the game because you, know, you know soccer, football, there's no there's no break, right? So you know when they get you know they're all drinking, right? Everybody's drinking and they don't want to miss the game, so they got to go when they got to go to the bathroom, they got to take a piss. They like piss in like bags, right? People <laughs> piss so I'm like I mean it's like okay cool whatever right? So then everyone's cheering. And then when there's people in the front that get up and they're like, hey, you know, tarjeta or whatever, right? That's a red card. Then the people in the, the the cheap seats, they start throwing their bags of piss at like oh, the, the people man. in the front. And it's like dripping over everyone going in. And they're just like, shut up, you rich bastard. You know, like it's just like, there's like, hey, sit your ass down, you know, you rich prick or whatever. And you're like, whoa. So my dad taps me on the shoulder. He's like, that, that's why. You see? That's why we don't sit there and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. It was crazy because, you know, as a kid, uh, growing up in Canada, obviously, and growing up in Mexico is going to be very different, right? But uh, it was funny. It was, well, not funny if you're the guy getting pissed thrown at him, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was, it, that was, it was a crazy situation, yeah. But it, uh, I also feel it's, it's quite sad because uh, Mexican culture is beautiful. Uh, people are beautiful and they're so warm and they're so... Uh, uh, like inviting, uh, but all that happens on the news is because there's so much corruption. It's like you look at the news and it's just like, it's always bad, right? The yep. food's amazing. Mexico, everything's, it's, um, I love Mexico. I actually, uh, when I go back, if, if I have the choice, I would rather go back to Mexico and everybody meets in Mexico because it's the food and it's cheaper and it's more fun and it's like beach weather. I love, I love Mexico. It's one of my favorite places on earth. But uh, when you talk to, you know, people, for example, here in Taiwan, where they don't have much exposure, exposure to Mexico and they will say, oh, you know, Mexican, Mexican restaurant. Oh, you know, Mexican. Well, she got a mom like, oh, I'm like, I am. But, you know, I have to explain, you know, family's Mexican. So I'm Mexican, but I was born in Canada. Right. Uh, so I always explain that. And they're always like, oh, Mexico, uh, 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 El Chapo. You know, it's ah. like it's El Chapo. It's always like it's always like uh oh the gangs, El Chapo, and and then there's another one, but it's always bad. I'm like, no, it's 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 not that they're like, oh and it's very dangerous, very dangerous. I'm like, 
it, there's a lot of good places. There's, there's a lot of good stuff happening there. And it's not their fault. It, it's just everybody is, that's what people are exposed to. They're exposed to, uh, you know, all the bad things, you know, because the, the, if, if you see the news, I think in any country, it's, it's the negative news that, that, that sells, even on social media, you know, you'll, you know, you, you can post a video, like a happy video or whatever, and, and it's going to get a couple of views. But if you post, if you post some, some two dudes fighting in front of a Seven Eleven or something, that's going to go viral. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, saying that Seven Eleven, I remember yeah. I, I saw a video and I, I'm not sure what part of Taiwan Yeah, is someone was videoing a Seven Eleven, And like you said, it goes viral. Um, yeah. There was this one oh. guy, he was, he was acting like, you know, the, the way he was acting, it looks very steroids rage type of person. I don't That's know if you've seen one. the video. That's a new one. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that like, yeah, it was right very, like in the past week or, or so. Yeah. And, and, you know, of course, that's going to get a lot of attention. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess. But I, let it, let it, let it be someone doing something good, someone doing something positive. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe one or two people are going to be tuning in. However, like you said, when we, we love something dramatic, we love the negative stuff. Like, yeah. Um, it's, 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 I think that's what it is everywhere. Yeah. One it's human of my nature, friends, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It sucks. Yeah. We love the drama, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Like, um, Belizean people tend to like to go live. They like to go live on whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever it may really? be. Really? Interesting. And, okay. and like to air out drama. Oh, really? They like to go out there and just be. My boyfriend's yeah. cheating on me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like in the movies. Yeah, yeah, Amazing. yeah. That, that, type, oh that, that type of stuff. And so I remember I was hanging out with two of my friends not too long ago. And all of us were just there on our phones, just just, just chilling, nothing much. And then one of my friends, he tunes into this lady's life. And she has a history of it. There's a long background with it. Like a whole love triangle, so many different things. And, <laughs> like, and he's yeah, like there. Like a novella. Like a novella. You know, it's life. like a novella. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's there watching, glued to it. And then when you look at the numbers, how many people are tuning in? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 oh. goes up. And I'm wow. like, wow. If it was anything else, it would probably be under 100 or, or yeah. something like that. But because they know it's going to be something drama, something dramatic, something juicy, they're like, okay, let's let's go there. That's crazy. Uh, that no, but I think yeah, like uh, obviously, there's some similarities with Taiwan and Mexico. Where I think here, or sorry, in Mexico, people love the novelas, right? And then in my in Canada, my mom would still watch the Mexican novelas, or or the other novelas from other different you know Latin countries. Uh, in Taiwan, they also have that, right? But they also they like like for example, my wife likes to watch uh, the the, the K dramas, right? Like the ones from Korea. And it's crazy. I mean, people people love that. And I, you know, you know, I'll sit with her and watch a bit once in a while. And it's just like people are screaming and women are slapping dudes. And then the dad, the dude <laughs> is standing there and people are cheating on each other. And, you know, dudes are punching each other. And, and, and it's like soup, super like fake punching. And it's just like it's like, wow, I, get, I don't know, man. It's I'd rather just watch, you know. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I live in a little bit of a bubble, man. I, I like to to watch what I what I watch, and you know, just simple stuff. I like to watch some U. Like I'm gonna watch fighting. I like to watch UFC, uh, you know, stuff like that. I like doing the podcast. I like hanging out with my kid who play play Roblox and stuff like that. You know, watch movies. But yeah, it's crazy how 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 uh, the drama seems to be uh, what people <laughs> what people like. There's yeah, a, we love it. It's crazy, man. There's <laughs> an old movie. Uh, the original idea for, and I, I still might do it for the for the for the podcast was uh, there's an old uh, it's old Matthew you know Matthew McConaughey right he's like it's yeah. an actor there's an old movie called Ed TV right I don't know if you ever heard of it it's old and basically he you know he wins a contest or whatever and so there's a f uh, camera crew basically following him around like 24 seven. I mean, if he, when he goes into the bathroom, of course not. But aside from that, <laughs> it's like 24 seven and they just live stream this guy's life. And it's just like all that he works at like a blockbuster or something. And so all the stuff, all the drama with his brother and then, you know, it's it just, it's crazy. And, and it's like, it's great. People love it. And it's still to this day, I think that that would still, still work, you know, especially with, all the crazy shit that I got to deal with here, man. Cause it's in a restaurant, you know, there's so many things that go on all the time and 
yeah, so that was kind of like, yeah, I don't know if you want to be on TV 24 seven, but uh, it's kind of crazy. It was a crazy one. It's a good one. Uh, Ed TV, if you ever a chance, it's good stuff. Okay. And, and that reminds me of like, you know, when you look at in general, um, like what, what, what do they call reality TV shows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People, people love them. And you know, that's what a lot of people like, and people in general just like to talk, like they like the drama. They like anything that's just crazy and extreme in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. Like, like since I've been back home, a lot of people used to see me anywhere, whether it's at the court, because it's a very small community, okay, you know, everyone, nice. and you're going to, you're going to see them almost every day or every other day yeah. or, or something like that. Yeah. And so they would be like, Hey bro, put me on your podcast. But I already know what they're, what they, <laughs> what they want to talk about. Like yeah. two guys saw me they're like, Hey bro, we should go on a podcast. This is like, they give ideas. It's like, Oh, we can do like what they do on drink champs and just sit around and talk talk shit and yeah I'm yeah like, and in my mind i don't have the time to explain to people oh, i don't really feel like that's what my podcast is about so i have to hit them with the yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let. <laughs> we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens Let, let's let's figure out something when i know more than likely i do not intend to do anything like that like because a lot of people the, that's the one thing that sells here yeah it's like cheat like, like like the cheese and the secrets and all that stuff or like the drama it's just the drama that's what that's what seems to sell man but when it comes to like a just a casual conversation or a serious conversation yeah no one would care to listen so yeah it's kind of crazy man it's kind of crazy how, how how that how that works and in, in this day and age yeah but uh yeah brother uh we've done i know i know you gotta go i know i i've got kept you a little bit over time here sorry, no, sorry I'm, I'm good you're good you're no good yeah. Yeah, yeah i'm good so i have a, one more question do you uh are, were there any surprising or sort of unexpected things that uh popped up you know during or sort of now that you have a pretty well-established podcast almost 80 episodes which is more than probably 95 percent of podcasts yeah um honestly i would say the craziest thing that well not craziest but things that pop up are people that I didn't expect to listen, probably okay. gave it a look. Like, for example, I have one of my mom's friends, like high school friends and that type nice. of stuff. Okay. She, she told my mom one time, she's like, you know, I'm surprised that he's, that he's the one that has a podcast because he's a generally quiet person, yeah. shy person. And so like, that's, that's a, what a lot of people give me like the, Oh wow. You have a podcast or, like mostly just the people that I didn't expect because when you start something like this and I don't consider it to be anything out of this world, right. Per se, in terms of what I'm doing, it's just, just a conversation. And so, yeah. um, when a lot of people look at it like, Oh wow, you have a podcast that that's so cool. And like they, they hype it up and sometimes hype it up more than what I do with it. And so like the reception I get from people, um, people that decide to listen the people that give me feedback like oh hey and you know just being able to connect with different people that you probably would never have connected with if it wasn't for it, the podcast yeah. yeah no i think i think that's great like the connections same thing same thing here um you know you will have people that you would never think watched it they'll be like hey i saw that one that episode and then I mean, blah 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 and they're talking about it. stuff that you know i hate to say but sometimes you know I, i'm super busy and i'm i'm you know, I forget sometimes what, you know, what, yeah, everything that was talked up, uh, talked about on 190 something podcasts. I'm like, it's not possible for me to, to remember everything. And some people be like, Hey, I remember when you guys talked about this and here's your, you know, you tell your story about, you know, the, the Vancouver thing and then, and, and, or, yeah. or the Korean wings or, or, or something. And I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. Like, like, yeah. what are you, I'm like, I have an idea that I spoke about that, but I, I don't really remember it because it's been so long ago. Like yeah. it happened with my girlfriend because she fell back because she was too busy. So when she was listening to other episodes to catch up, she was like, I like that something. I'm like, huh? What are you I like? I, I really and truly don't remember what yeah. I said in that episode. And yeah. like for me, even though now that I only do it once every two weeks, because when I was in Taiwan as a student, I had, all the time in the world to just okay. arrange okay. with people and gotcha. so it, the weekly because if i kept on doing weekly i would have been probably over 100 or at least close to 100 by now 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm here. I'm at my family's business from Monday to Saturday. Oh, okay. Um, well, in the morning, well, Monday to Friday, in the, it's like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. When I'm done from there, I probably okay. most of the time go to the basketball court or occasionally hang out with my friends. And so gotcha. there's a little, little bit to no time available to really do it every week. Yeah, it makes understand. It, it, it makes the podcast seem very draining. It, and I don't want to have that type of relationship with the podcast where it's like, yeah. it oh, feels like a, a chore. chore. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so now that I'm doing it every other week, it, it's kind of easier to remember stuff, okay. but only for that time period. Okay, because, for the two weeks or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. I record another one, it's like, okay, I replace that memory with, that new information because it's like an old it's like an old vcr kind of like replacing itself all the time yeah you're recording like, over like, yeah, yeah me too okay in, occasionally in certain conversations you will be able to recall yeah. mentioning yeah. small little things here and there but if someone brings up something very specific it's like uh, i might not remember that at all yeah that's and yeah that's just the way it is unfortunately especially yeah. when you do a lot of them as yeah. for you yeah. you do it every week so right man it's, it's kind of crazy i mean it's it's uh i enjoy it still it's kind of like my my outlet you know I, I love it i always have people that you know like oh you should do this you should do this you should do this and then i have people like oh you can get this sponsor and do this and i have had a couple of offers but then people are like i want to change this you should change that you should change this and i'm like uh do i really want i'm kind of enjoy if i change it into like a job then it's not it's not that enjoyable like you know, I, I just like to chat with people. And, and again, same thing for me. Uh, you were saying about people uh, saying you're very quiet and you're surprised you have a podcast. Uh, for me, too, yeah. uh, when I went to uh, when I was in Canada, I was a very, very like super, super quiet, introverted person. So I had to kind of come out of my shell uh, when I was alone and kind of like semi broke in Taiwan. You know, <laughs> there's no family. There's no there's no support. You know, it's like you just have to make friends or or or. or you know stay at home and play video games all day so so which is not bad either right so i, I still yeah, do that now, now once while, yeah <laughs> once in a while so so i figure you know i came here i was young i'm like i was like 20 23 or something i was yeah i was 23 i thought okay well you know let's let's push yourself so yeah now now yeah people don't really they don't really believe it but it's still i still once in a while i'll feel that that you know that uh, sort of introvert introvert stuff i kind of cover it up yeah but uh, yeah, like sometimes it's like, oh, I don't really want to do this or that. I don't really want to chat. I don't really want to do anything. But yeah, it's kind of a, you know, if I ever you know, wrote a book, it'd be like the the extroverted introvert. You know what I mean? It's like you're pushing yourself to be like this extrovert. I, you know? I, yeah, that, that's that's literally the way I feel at times because yeah, you're pushing like it, right? I, I was discussing with one of my cousins one time. I was like, you know, when I'm at home. Yeah. And, and it's and that's still the case now that I'm back in Belize. Yeah. I've gone back to more of a reserved yeah. personality. Yeah. Okay, like not as introverted as I used to be, but yeah. still still that. Meanwhile, when I'm in Taiwan, I'm a it, it, it's just a different environment. It brings yeah. out um more in me and we kind of boil it down to also when you look at Taiwanese culture, they're generally quiet and soft-spoken people. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to compared to the cultures that we come from even more so, introverted than us so we have to be yeah. like hey hey yeah, yeah so yeah. us being introverted compared compared to their introvert yeah them being introverts is like we're we're extroverted yeah, yeah for sure so yeah yeah that that that's that's just the way it seems it's all about perspective and to me yeah. it, it has allowed me to you know grow out of it being in a different country not knowing anyone basically yeah. like starting you're starting from scratch yeah, and um, language, language at the beginning, you know, you don't know anything and stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you don't have your parents because growing up, a lot of the people you knew through your childhood were yeah. probably like family or family friends or people that knew your parents or what's not. Now it's like you don't have anyone to make that bridge to connect you to anyone. You're the bridge for yourself. So you you have to figure it out. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, when you don't have that, uh, that sort of safety net to fall back on, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's a. Uh, I think it's good actually because I know I know a lot of people that are like my good friends and I love it again and we again we come from a small town and you know everybody kind of a, a percentage of people will stay in this small town and then you know when I go it's great for me because when I go back I feel like I'm in high school again everyone's making a high school jokes and stuff again and it's yeah. fun. 
but yeah, I mean, it, but some, yeah, some of my friends, they're, they're still in like the high school mode, you know, in their forties and it's like, oof, okay. Okay. But I mean, it, you know, they still living close to home and, and they still, some of them still live at home. So yeah, it, it's totally, totally understandable. Uh, and again, not, you know, it's, it's tough to say, you know, who's right or wrong because I, I, I don't even, I barely get to see my family, you know? So that's like, it's a huge sacrifice that I have to make. And ideally, I mean, I can make some good money and go back, you know, every year and, you know, the plan would be to grow the restaurant and, you know, to a few more and, and you know, maybe half a year there, half, uh, sorry, yeah, half there, half here, but, still not there I mean, you know and, yeah it's it's pretty much like what your parents did by moving to canada is what exactly. you're doing in taiwan so yeah you know as as much as and i i've heard that so many times from one of my closest friends mom she's like a second mom to me she's always telling yeah. me you know josh um you have to figure it out like for yourself like yeah, yeah your your mom your family would love to have you here but yeah. at the same time you have to you know it's it's what you want to do you have to just do that like in a yeah. sense, you have to be kind of selfish, yeah, a little bit yeah, because sure. you know you you still have to take them into account. You have to be mindful of them. However, you still have to figure out what it is that you want to do for yourself. So yeah, you know, and, and I used to, I still miss my family a lot. But I think uh, after I got married, you know, I would still miss my family a lot. Of course, I still miss them now. But I found that after I had my daughter. It's kind of like my brain just changed and then it's just like everything's just kind of like focused on my daughter of course i still miss my parents i miss my you know my family brother sister mom dad uh but i mean like my main thing is always like you know i have this little girl i gotta make sure she she has a you know a fair shake at life and you know give her give her what i can but you know try not to spoil her and then you know try to make sure she has a good life so you know the things shift but i, I still do miss my family but after having a daughter you know, your brain, your brain kind of shifts a little yeah, bit. Yeah. She, she's now your top priority. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it, brother. Yeah. Agree. A hundred percent. You don't, you don't so, have to, you don't have to worry about that for a while. I think though, just a young guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, hope, yeah, nah, yeah, that, yeah, not, yeah. That's not yeah. in the plans. Anytime yeah, it's not in the plans right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But like, so like something that I thought about earlier that I, I didn't bring up, um, like with the podcast, right. Yeah. Allowing to meet new people. Like, yeah. If it wasn't for a podcast, I wouldn't have met you as well. Yeah, like, 100%. Yeah. I remember back in my freshman year, this was June 2019. Um, it was one of my friend's birthday. I was leaving Taiwan probably the next day to come back home for summer vacation. All of us were leaving within the next couple of days. And so okay. we went, we were in the Tianmu area. Tianmu was foreign to me at that point. I didn't really know Tianmu, even yeah, though yeah. it's literally like a 10, 15 minute bus ride from my school, which is yeah. right near the Shilin Night Market. It's right yeah, there. Yeah, that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so when I went there, I'm like, okay, nice. So she wants to go to a Mexican place and we're around there. And I think there were two Mexican places in that general area. If I'm yeah, not there, mistaken. there used to be an, uh, there used to be, there's been a couple other ones around. Yeah, yeah. And so I think the first one she wanted to go to was yours. Okay. But for some reason it was closed uh maybe a monday or something yeah yeah and so look at that from almost going to the restaurant it being closed to finding out about the podcast yeah. remembering the restaurant as well connecting with you if i just went there as a customer would have never made the connection you know yeah. learn about the podcasting you know is and for me it's always nice to connect with other people that are doing similar things yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah because it, you're able to see what they're doing, yeah. kind of get ideas of what to do. Yep. And it, like it helps to inspire you to want to do certain stuff. Like I remember I was recently talking to my girlfriend. And so I was telling her that, you know, I look at Eddie's setup and I'm like, that's low key where I want to be at one point. Like, you know, having yeah. the having a space where you're able to just have the guests come in. You guys sit around a table have the yeah. proper setup and just just talk but yeah for now yeah. just work with what i have so no for sure man i mean like for me because i have the space already i figured you know we used to have when we had two restaurants we also had a small little office and i thought okay i want to keep these the, the podcast and the restaurant thing separate so uh i had this back room this storage room in in the office and it was like disgusting so i cleaned it up 
and you know, I, I scrubbed everything down and I painted up the walls and then I hung like a green screen. And then if, if you go back to like before episode one, I think there's three or four episodes of, uh, I think it was just the Eddie one-on-one or something like that. I can't remember the name. Okay. And they're still up there. And uh, yeah, those were, you know, I did all the research on microphones and stuff and everybody's like, you know, buy a blue Yeti, buy a blue Yeti. Right. And so you get this blue Yeti that picks up all the audio and it's, 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 it wasn't great. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't great because the Blue Yeti, I mean, it has four, four sort of like modes. You know, it could be like just one, or it could be like you know back and forth, or s- there's four. I can't remember what the fourth one. And one is all, but even if you put it on just you know back and forth and put it in the middle of two people, it still picks up all the cars and every Way single too thing. Much. It's crazy. I, so. Even episode one here, I still had that mic and it was picking up the dishes. It was picking up everything. You know, it was it was kind of crazy, man. It was kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I, th- I, th- I think it's it's been good. Uh, I've got to meet like uh, amazing people. I, I, I always remember this uh, a Taiwanese uh, a, a woman who's a fighter, who's Taiwan's first pro fighter. Her name is uh, Jenny Huang. She just won a fight in, in uh, two fights in Japan the last few months. Okay. And she she fought for the world championship in one one championship one fc she fought angela lee and you know i met her through another guy who was a uh, one of the part owners of ufc gym and so i was like i would love to interview her so you know i talked to her and, and i invited her and she's like okay cool and she came in and she was like all dressed up and she looked she looked like incredible and i was like holy crap so i'm nervous because i'm actually like a fan <laughs> right and then i talked to her before and she, she's like, she's like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm just a bit nervous. And I'm like, you're, you're nervous. You, you fight in a cage in front of like 50,000 people. Like that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm the one who should be nervous. And I was, and, and uh, we did that one in Chinese and that was good. That was a really good one. She, she's in Japan now, but when she comes back, uh, hopefully I can get her back on and I won't be so nervous. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah. And it, it takes time for you to really one. You have to you get better with your skills, whether it's yeah. like your speaking and your your ability to just take something out of the conversation and turn it into something else. Yeah. And then also your equipment itself, it, it progressively yeah. gets better. Like 100%. I think too many people, too many people believe that okay, when you start, it's supposed to be a finished product right away. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's 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 not possible. You know, we I try to make it like one percent better every time, and and you know sometimes you don't get it, and sometimes you forget your audio gear, and then you're late, whatever. But yeah, I think I think uh, yeah, I don't know. Step by step, I love it. I my plan is to keep growing my business, keep living out here, and 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 keep growing the podcast. You know, once a week. You know, ideally, to be honest, something like this remote, it's 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 actually seems seems even easier because i don't have to set up all, all the everything yeah it's so way probably, easier i could do it like another you know i could throw another one once a week you know in there as well like this because it'd be fun i enjoyed this yeah this is just pure yeah. chat and i can see everything i can kind of control everything here as opposed to like you know the whole thing and customers are coming and stuff so yeah i enjoyed this this is a great chat brother appreciate it yeah likewise man thank you for having me on for the second yeah. time yeah, well, we'll do it again sometime soon. Maybe we can do hey. it again soon. And uh, keep me posted on Taiwan. When you get back, we'll do one in person. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sounds great. Um, and, and you know, like the same, like what we did with mine last time. Yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not trying to. It's a, it's a two-way street here. So yeah, yeah, we can, yeah. We can definitely make something happen again on, yeah, on if, my podcast. If you, ever, if you ever need a guest, man, hit me up. I'm, I'm down. I love it. Sounds good. All right, brother. Do you, do you have anything that you want to add before uh, before we call it? I kept you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, bro. The yeah. only thing I got to add is, man, I miss those wings. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hey, shoot. I got that hey. for you anytime. Anytime, man. Uh, so for anybody who's watching right now, uh, in the description below, uh, we have the links to uh, your podcast and also your Instagram. So if they want to check out the podcast, obviously go to the podcast link. If they want, If you want to connect with uh, Josh, from josh's planet josh's world no <laughs> uh, yeah hit him up on instagram and 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 yeah make it happen yeah thanks brother oh, appreciate it yeah before we go i noticed um someone commented um they have some dancers from belize joining some oh, concert july in beto 
There you go. Are you, are you going to be wow. here in July? And maybe if you're here, come on, come check it out. Yeah. Uh, that for sure is out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's summer, summer, July. Uh, hopefully I will be in, in, in Canada. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Awesome. Yeah. Gary, appreciate the comment. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Josh. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I guess we'll see you guys next week. Yeah? Bye-bye. Peace.